Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Death to the Feather Bang. Ah, oh, don't be too harsh on the man. I'd be as harsh as I want, whatever. I do what I want. And also joining us today is Twilight Genesis. Yup. Is that all you have to say? Yup. <laughs> Alrighty then. So in today's episode review, we'll be reviewing Season 7, Episode 8, Hard to Say Anything. In this episode, when Big Man Kentucky develops his first crush on Sugar Bell, the CMCs try to help him with her heart before rivaling Stallion Featherbang does. It's one of those episodes, all around cringe, if you know what I mean. But before we jump into reviews, first impressions are in order. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, first we need to hold a moment of silence for all the fanships that Big Macintosh did not partake upon, including Cheery Mac, Flutter Mac, and Marvel Mac. We salute you, O Sinky Chips. Rest well at the bottom of our subconscious. Cheery, Marble, and who's the third one again? Uh, Fluttershy. Ah, yes. Flutter Mac is a good one too, but I don't see the Flutter one. Like, the... Marble and Cheerly one, I kind of see in the background a lot, but I don't see Flutters. Where did they get that idea? Oh, less to do with total interaction and more to do with uh, with just the idea of this shy, timid, gentle pony and this gentle giant as an item. They were It was a cute idea. Hmm. Alrighty then, that makes sense. But either way, now we have Sugar Mac. And oh, the things that th- goes through with this. Uh, I enjoyed the romp. I felt bad for Big Mac. I, I enjoyed the continuity callback to the uh, love poison. <laughs> yeah, that, that one. <laughs> uh, yes. But throughout it all, I kept wondering, where are those other stallions singing for Featherbang popping up? Does he have like a dimensional pocket or something? You know, they're, they're just hiding behind the bushes, waiting for that one scene to pop up. Like, any minute, any minute, guys, any minute, guys, he's going to sing. He's going to sing, and we're going to go do backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a band in a bag. <laughs> that could work, too. Um, so, Twy, what about you? Thoughts on this one? I, initially, I really, really liked this episode. Uh, it, despite mm-hmm. the few moments of cringe, I thought this episode was quite funny. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting. I was glad that we actually got to see uh, some, at least even if it was only focused on Sugar Bell, seeing one character and actually being back at Twilight, uh, Starlight's old village. That was brilliant. I thought that was a great, great thing to do because we haven't really seen a lot of the village since it originally appeared at the start of se- what season five. Yeah, we start start of season five, and then. We saw it again briefly at the end of Season 5 and then at the end of Season 6. I don't think we've seen it any other times aside from those three times and now. So I thought that the vacation was a, a, a fun fun trip out of Ponyville to somewhere we don't normally go to. And at least you get to see how things are progressing now, so that's good. Aside from uh, Sugar, Sugar Bell not making bad muffins anymore, there was the guy who used to sell like, the tatty old uh, cloaks now has like a whole rack of nice looking clothes out front of his store. So I like that the nod. And Silver, you were saying something? Well I was curious how things have progressed because they still need to uh spread the town out a little. Yes, because Sugar Bell said, Okay, here's the town. That's all of it. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> a street. And I will say this, they do actually need a farm. Uh, yeah, true, true. So and but that that's more for the meat of the discussion. Yeah, true, 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 true. So let's see. As for me, this episode was a fun one. It's one of those tales where a boy meets girl, girl meets boy, then gets blocked by another boy who likes girl, and three helpers come to help but kind of screw everything up. So yay, it's one of those stories. Fun, fun. But I don't know. I mean, it's fun. So much cringe. And one more thing, we get to hear Big Mac talk more than one line. So that's good. Yay for Big Mac talking. Yay. So anywho, shall we get into reviewing? Yes, we shall. Alrighty then. So if you guys at home have not watched this episode yet, we recommend you pause this episode here and go watch the, well, episode. And welcome back. So we start off with Apple Bloom painting the barn. Um, 
with how many times the barn get destroyed, I'm not surprised by this action. Uh, give give it a ten minutes. It probably got destroyed just after they left. <laughs> oh God! And I wonder by what. Actually, I guess I was surprised Tyrek didn't blow up Applejack's house first, and uh, then <laughs> then Twilight can be all like, "Oh no, I lost my home!" And Applejack's like, "Well, Sugar Cube, you get used to it around here." <laughs> my question is, what well, three smaller buildings to the right of the barn? I don't think we've seen those before. I know they've got a chicken coop and a pig pen. But those are sort of isolated on their own. Uh, yeah, uh, but still, uh, chicken coop probably. I don't know. No, that maybe they're just smaller storehouses because they do have bales of hay next to them. Yeah, uh, the apple farm geography is not up on the high list. Like we really need to see the full map details for it. But anywho. Um, Sweetie Bell and Scootaloo comes to tell Apple Bloom what they found and what they found is a box of cool costumes from the pageant, something I forgot. I thought it was Rarity uh, cleaning out some sure. junk. Yes, um, Rarity junk stuff, yes. But still, uh, they found stuff and they're going to play around until they spot Big Mac loading up the cart with a lot of apples. And Apple Bloom commented that, hey, um, isn't this like the fifth time you've been going to Starlight's old village? And the poor village doesn't have a name. So, yay, that's um, one thing you need to be corrected in the future. I suggest the village, village, straightforward and to the point. Or street town. Uh, Well, yeah, that that can work. Street town. Yeah, hey, street town Equestria. Of course, Celestia helped them when they have a population boom, but what are you going to do then? Expand to Street Town 2. The Streetening. <laughs> Ooh, there you so go. There's a Halloween episode. Street. You get Streets Town. It covers everything from 2 to a bin- uh, infinity streets. Brilliant. Streets Town. <laughs> Yay. So, uh, after Apple Bloom comments on uh, going to the village... Um, five times now. Big Mac blushes something fierce, and this gives Kutlu an idea of, hey, he's probably hiding something. He could be a secret spy, or, well, it's a CMC they don't know, and they decide to to tag along and see what he's doing there. Privacy? What's that? Yeah, it's Sequestria. What is privacy, right? I what thought I learned love? this last one already. <laughs> but anywho, um, after the CMC tags along, we have a really, really long trip to the village, and while doing that, Sweetie Bell's reading some kind of fairy tale book. And soon they discover who got the eye of Big Mac. And it's Sugar Bell. Sugar Bell is one of, well, from what Apple Bloom described, is one of um, Starlight's friend who was in the village who bakes goods. Yay. Well, at the time she baked bads, it was quite painful to see what they did to poor, to poor uh, Pinkie Pie's stomachio. That was one of my favorite jokes from that episode, actually. We have muffins. And, and that's that, it. That was it. Did, do you not remember the, 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 the kooky look and the weird way she says it? That was it's the whole awesome. joke. It was uh, perfect. But <laughs> well, at least now Sugar Bell has a lot of things to bake. Like apples. 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 That's a lot of apples. Yeah, that's the, the yeah. I'm in kung fu flashbacks. Watch this. Wow, that's a lot of apples. <laughs> oh, I, th- I think I broke Norman. I'm just glad I wasn't the only one that had the the kung fu uh, the the kung pao flashback. Norman might have had some P- PTSD from that, actually. No. <laughs> No one really gets over the great Kung Fu review of 20 Dickety 7. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, right there, Norman. To normal. Yeah. You need an apple? Yep. Come back to us, Norman. Wee, wee, wee. Still would think of a moment. <laughs> well, let's just talk about the physicality on display. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Sugar Bell definitely lets her interest, no, I mean, the way she looks at him, the way she rests her hoof on his, um, oh, what do you call that, the yoke? Mm-hmm. Uh, the way she looks at him, she is totally into him, and he into her, 
Of course, he, of course, has to have the uh, goofier expression. I'm talking super goofy. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. But that was making him so enduring. And people, I think, are, have been eager to see this. Big Mac is what you might call a late bloomer. One of the things I liked about when he was at least expressing interest in Marvel is that for, folks sort of assumed that because he wasn't lusting after the main six, uh, he must not be interested in women, which I thought, that's not a compliment to anyone. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that he's showing sort of a healthy interest. He's, he's crushing on her, but he's not acting like a perv, as some places are, are inclined to do. True, true. Technically, the way that I look at this episode at first was okay. Uh, Big Mac's trying to say, I love you, but uh, Sugar Bell wants to say the same thing, but something gets in the way and they two fumble and didn't quite get there yet. But not what I expect of what will happen later. Oh, if what happens later is worth a restraining order. Oi, oi, oi. But anywho, sorry, go ahead. But anywho, Big Mac gets to leave still on cloud nine until he spies. Well, how did, how is this for surreal? You leave, you leave a place where you've got a crush on a young lady, go outside and manage to game an ounce of self composure, only to see your sister in a pirate hat, her friend in a rainbow rig, and another friend in Marcho, no, Groucho Marx glasses. There we go. Knew it was there somewhere. Groucho Marx glasses. You just say to yourself, what, what is in those baked goods she makes? You do not want to know. But still, but still, um, it's surreal to see your sister there. And the way that, the way, the way that Apple Bloom just casually asks his brother, like, bro, 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 be honest with me. Do you have a crush on Sugar Bell? And with the way that he answered, <laughs> uh, priceless. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, but still, but still, having Big Mac being Goofy, uh, giving a goofy answer, and um, Apple Bloom being really, really excited, just bounces around and tells every, tells the whole world, "Hey, my brother has a crush! Yay, his first crush ever!" Like, uh, dude, down low, don't tell everyone. That's right. This is a private and serious moment that we're going to butcher as we introduce our next character. <laughs> oh yeah. So before we introduce him, Apple Bloom says, "Go for it. Tell her how you feel." And he does by presenting, or by picking up a flower and trying to present it to her. And yeah, she seems excited. Uh, he seems excited. And Featherbanks seems excited too. <laughs> uh, who is Featherbanks? I don't know. Was he in the town previously? I don't remember. Well, apparently he must have come afterwards because I have a hard time envisioning this guy as part of the cult. Yeah, I Unless... definitely couldn't see him as being from there, from the cult days. Unless, of course, he got, he joined Starlight because, uh, he got dumped. There we go. Oh. Oh, developing the headcanons now. Featherbangs trying to make the moves on a, on a sweet young filly. Is it filly? No, that's, that's a little girl. No, that sounds wrong. A sweet, a sweet young mare. And she turns him down something awful. And in despair, he renounces his cutie mark, gives up his loving ways. Well, um, I do like that idea, but from the gallery of Fredder Banks, he's new. So he's just moved in. Uh, sad. Sad. It's very sad. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, Fredder Bang wants up Big Mac in the flower department and, um, Sugar Bell accepts. Wow, okay. Well, maybe that's the one thing I don't like about this episode. Sugar Bell, for a good part of it, is strangely passive about all this. Uh, I, I would like if some of our female listeners could weigh in on this, but a guy comes out of nowhere and starts uh, making advances on you. I would see that as very creepy rather than uh, endearing. True. Um, I ain't no girl, but what I can tell by this is that she's just being nice. Being nice, but of course, she doesn't look to her right where Big Mac is laying prone after being violently shoved aside. Uh, blinders? <laughs> I don't know. Get the cutie mark hit squad in on this. This sucker's got to go down. Well, before he goes down, Big Mac is down on his luck, and he trots away. And the CMC says, no, man, like, you can't give up. You, you need to fight for her love and stuff. And they ask, what can he do that you don't? And Big Mac points that he's juggling. And 
gives the corny line. Oh god, he's so good with the corny lines. <laughs> so good at juggling. And a fun fact, like there's three fangirls behind feathers and they look similar to one beauty and a beast cartoon characters. Yeah. The the swooning pounds, which my friend who absolutely loves them thinks they're the best part of the episode. He looked it up uh I think last night. They are actually credited as Swooning Pony one, two and three. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, that well. cheers me. I played a swooning pony. What do you mean I'll never work in this town again? Oh <laughs> uh, well, but still, I do like the reference there. Like, uh, well, now I'm thinking of the Gaston theme song, but with Featherbanks, who juggles balls like Featherbanks. Who? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, I can't do it. Although here's a here here's the question: What do they do when they do the live action pony remake of this uh, episode? I do not even want to know. <laughs> Com- complete with uh, singing and mildly implied uh, more than bromance. <laughs> Probably. But still, but still. Um, Sweetie Belle brought up the idea of, hey, um, I read books on this and they say that you can do stuff like fight a dragon for your love. Um, the only dragon they know is Spike. So, yeah, he ain't no threat. Yeah, he- yeah. You're gonna lose your your ogres and oubliettes player, ain't no thing. Yeah, bros before, um, whatever that Attractive is. Attractive mares. Yes. Although, has anyone ever asked the dragon how they feel about this? Like, wait, you're killing me because you want a date? I mean, come on, man, you're killing me, literally. <laughs> uh, well, the dragon interaction in Questra has been very limited. Spike is the only one who is in Ponyville, and technically, Spike is the what? Dragon out. Future episodes will have Ember, and everybody's scared of her, so, yeah. She likes to eat your furniture, but that's a story for another day. Yes, another awesome story for another day. But anywho, um, they decide to go with Operation Damsel in Distress, where in this operation, Goodaloo tries to steal Sugar Bell's saddle, and have Big Mac come to the rescue and gets back the saddle only to be taught by feathers yay good on you feathers like yeah wait, wait to uh wait to take the shot yeah you jerk although i find it interesting in this in this world where basically six heroines are the lifesavers of the entire country the concept of this damsel in distress is still somehow marketed as a romantic idea uh, well, it, it, they did read a storybook on it, so... Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Even even ponies go that route. So it's like, huh, ah, okay. I just find it kind of paradoxical. Where the main heroes are female-based, that is? Well, just that in this culture where... How can I describe it? Damsel in Distress was is mostly part of a male fantasy, I think. I don't know if ladies have, like, mm-hmm. dream of being rescued like that. I don't know. Usually this show likes to turn those things on its ear or at least flip the roles, kind of like Shining Armor is the one in distress all the time, the damsel in armor. So it's kind of funny now they're saying, oh, yeah, let's rely on the old damsel in distress trope. I'm sorry, what? Well, I think this could be one of those exceptions where, okay, this is a storybook and it's just a storybook. Like, you guys should not be taking this too seriously. Uh, You bite your tongue, sir. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> We're not a fame and misfortune yet. Thank you very much. Yeah, true that. But still, um, it's one of those things where to me, this is just the storybook like any other storybooks out there. Um, the main six are the exception to that rule, but still, I don't know. Like, we can go through a whole thing about how gender stereotypes can be fought in this world but you know what we don't have that kind of time here and especially not in this episode probably we'll do it on a later episode who knows but anywho continuing on um operation uh, sorry part two of their operation is truth love kiss which is creepy all around this is where you get a restraining order yeah i mean even if sugar bell is into big mac like <laughs> that face there <laughs> no that's the first thing you see no. <laughs> i consider this to be the first truly cringy moment of the episode although the transition leading into it 
I think is one of the funnier moments in the episode. Oh, how so? Because uh, they finish off the previous scene by going, okay, on to the next plan, and Big Mac uh, goes, yup. And then immediately it tra- uh, it transitions to show him in the costume with him going, nope. <laughs> so it's the automatic, just instant reversal of uh, his preparedness and willingness to go through with the next plan is just amusing to me. It, it's, also, a, it's an old trick, yeah. but it's a classic. Also, I appreciate uh, that he was very firm. No love potions. <laughs> oh, so true, so true. That old callback. And Sweetie Belle with the awesome um, line with, oh, that's our metaphorical um, sunset writing. Uh, how does she say that? Hey, that's our metaphorical yeah. sunset they're riding off into. <laughs> yeah, that line was good. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's when Sweetie Belle has loud voice lines, they're always great. Uh, I personally love the line from the the Love Potion episode. Oh, come on. That's I have that <laughs> as my Facebook uh, notification sound. It's great. But still, but still. Um they're they're not out of the dumps yet. They have their final part of the plan. Part three. Um singing a song. That always works right. I mean it works in all Disney movies. So why wouldn't it work in My Little Pony? Yeah, just look at how well it worked out in uh, Frozen. Yeah, what happened in Frozen? I don't remember. They sang a song about how great it was to meet and fall in love, and then oh. I don't want to spoil the rest of the movie for anyone who hasn't seen it. At the same time, who hasn't seen it yet? I mean, the movie is like three years old. Actually, I, oh no, it, it was, uh, I was just thinking at Crystal Mountain, I, I got to talk to Minty Root, and he... As he has never seen Zootopia, so there's always some folks who hold uh-huh. out. And I was very impressed that he uh, he managed to avoid let, uh, try anything for a good long time. Oh, I think he should just try it out, you know. <laughs> Either way, he had avoided very popular Disney movies. But still, but still, um, continuing on to our um, topic of discussion, um, Big Mac sings a uh, country ballad, which is not bad. Which is not bad. And it seems that, um, sweet, uh, Sugar Bell here is into it. Like, she, she's smiling and getting hugged. And they're yeah, like, he, she is really into the whole song and dance. Like, yeah. Like, I, I, I can dig it. Then suddenly hip hop beat comes in. Like, what? Which again, getting a creepy stalker vibe from Feather Bangs. How is he timing this so well? Is he like more a match for Pinkie Pie? My blocker senses are tingling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this part here is the part where, oh boy, um, you a train wreck? Yeah, this is it. This is a train wreck happening right now, right in front of your eyes. Where Su- uh, Sugar Bell was into it for a bit, but then it kind of went downhill with the whole hip hop sound and dance and. Big Mac trying to hard, trying really hard to impress Sugar Bell, and yeah, yeah. Um, one, you, you know what happens when you push things over the limit? Things, well, break. I must break you. <laughs> yeah, and well, it seems that with their shenanigans, um, Sugar Bell's countertop breaks, and she's really, really angry and tells everyone to skedaddle. Oh, that's the polite way of putting it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Although what she asserts that, she says that if you think this is what impresses me, you don't know me at all. Well, you have been pretty impressed by this throughout the episode so far. Yeah. Oh, that's a cool carriage. Let me hop and ride in it with you, complete stranger who keeps hitting on me. The only thing she seems to have shown concern at has been uh, waking up to Big Mac's face in her, in her face. And the moment the hip hop started those are the only times where she's shown concern and discomfort for what's happening. Everything else she's been cool with, including Big Mac being knocked down at the start of the episode. It's like, Sugar Bell, you, you, you get a little messed up in the head still. I think uh, I think Starlight's efforts may, be, may have had a few uh, <laughs> negative impacts on her. Side effects may include... <laughs> Side effects may include dating, accepting praise, weird country fantasies. Apples. <laughs> apples, apples, apples. Uh, well, uh, we we move on or we carry on with um, the CMCs trying to look for Big Mac. And by the way, I have to point something out. 
um, party favor and the blue night glider. Yeah, night glider. It seems that they're really good friends. Really, really good friends. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it seems they're really good friends. Well, which is understandable. I mean, they, they were the resistance for a time in that town. The bonds of camaraderie could be more. Meanwhile, Double Diamond is off to the side saying, am I the new Brayburn? <laughs> yes. He is the new Brayburn. Uh, but uh, with those background characters aside, we get to see Big Mac moping under a tree, thinking that he failed his love. And yeah, I'm, like he's just giving up. And well, CD Bell just... Sorry, um, well, Apple Boom just says that you shouldn't give up. Like, you should try and think of something. Like, maybe you shouldn't treat Sugar Bell like a storybook and treat her more like a person or a pony in this case. So Big Mac discovers what he needs to do and recruits a CMC to help. And we'll jump into that soon enough. Although I'm sure somewhere in the distance there's a dragon be like, oh, I dodged a bullet on that one. Whew. Maybe it's Spike. Yeah. Oh, Spike's uh, danger senses are tingling. It's like, my abused character senses are tingling. Again. Oh. It's the fifth time this week. Not just Spike. Your abuse senses will get a workout in a later episode. Trust me. <laughs> but still, um, one action later, uh, we go for the whole, oh, I'm new in town. Could you introduce, could you show me around town? And yeah, uh, this sugar bell just points to the town like yeah this is it like we, we don't have a real big town it's like one row of buildings like nothing special about it worst tour ever but you started you to see through scootaloo's cunning disguise yes like have i seen you before and well let's cut to the chase once sugar bell arrives at her shop she sees big mac well at first she's really angry but once it's revealed that Big Mac was... He was gathering wood for her. Know what I mean? Wink, wink, <laughs> nudge, nudge, say no more. Uh, oh my. Yes, good. <laughs> gathering wood to make her a new display counter for her big goods. And she's ecstatic. She really loves the whole thing. And say no more, they hook up and kiss. And yeah, they 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 like their relation. Like Their relationship starts there. Say no more. Even the CMCs don't have to say anything else. I feel we should correct that they don't really kiss in the traditional sense. It's the pony no nuzzle, which is adorable. Flippin' adorable. True, but in Eskimo terms, that's considered a kiss. Let's rub noses like the Eskimos. Yeah. But with that, uh, Sugar Bell and Big Mac go on a quick date and just um, smoosh faces. The CMCs goes out to discover that Featherbank needs help with his relationship. And what re- what movie was that referencing? I don't remember. Um, I think it's like Sixteen Candles or something like that, where he has the boombox in the rain outside a house. Oh, at that's the uh, end of the film. Oh, that's uh, say anything. Ah, uh, okay. Say anything. Which? Oh, hey, I just got the title. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Funny thing is that oh, yeah, the yeah. comics likewise likewise parodied this for uh, Keynes and Shining Armor. What? How? Oh yeah, ni anything. I remember that. It's it's very much the same thing. A guy is outside playing a favorite song in the rain for a girl he he loves, and it's a, I have not seen that movie, but it's apparently very romantic. Not quite R- Romeo and Juliet levels, but close. Yeah. I've seen a few of those movies. I think I see snippets. I was too young, but I don't remember it. But still, uh, with that, the CMC decides like, hey, um, feathers, you're out of luck. Like, um, Sugar Bell decided on Big Mac. So yeah, but still, you got, you got your three, uh, groupies back there. So that's something. And he doesn't know what to do. And here's the funny thing. This episode aired while uh, Everfree Northwest was going on. Uh, which one was this that you mentioned Air Canadian or Discovery? Uh, Seattle. Sorry, I'm talking about the um, original air date because this was one of the crazy super early air dates because 
um, Canada wanted to show early episodes of this. In Canada, it showed May 13th, while on the Discovery family, it showed on May 27th. Well, let's see here. Dr. Wolf and I talk about it as it's brand new, so this would have been the crazy early Canadian release. All right, then. It's blame Canada, because the first half of this season has been completely out of bonkers in terms of, re- of release schedule. And also don't forget Australia. Thanks, Australia. Oh, wait, you gave us Anthony C. Thanks, Australia. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but we had interviewed Vincent Tong just the day before uh, Ooh, as, par- nice. as part of a panel. And he said this was a flash century, but I think it carries over to Feather Bangs as well. Uh <laughs> that he himself feels very awkward talking to women. He's not really sure what what is the right thing to say. And it's, I just find it fun that even the voice actors can relate to the characters they voice. Which is cool, yeah. Although, I believe on Twitter, there's uh, there are photos of, of Vincent singing, uh, signing a Featherbangs uh, Dakimura that, that someone made. <laughs> and Oh god, that was fast. What happened? And then that's when you know that uh that we as a fandom have truly become a true WTF. When you've got the voice actors <laughs> signing dockies of characters they voiced, and they're given a smile like, Oh yeah, I'm doing this. <laughs> Oh, you, you you want to know? You want to compile it? WTF moment is when the voice actors have their own ducky. Uh, Peter New, the voice of Big Mac, has his own uh, ducky of Big Mac. <laughs> Good for Sometimes him. Sometimes success isn't measured in fame and fortune. Sometimes it's measured in <laughs> WTF. Indeed. Uh, but still, but still. <clears throat> but I found that I found that kind of charming and. Despite multiple jokes I made about kill Featherbangs, he is, eh, he's fun in small doses. Yeah, he's the kind of goofy, um, uber popular guy, but has no clue what to do with it. He's that kind of guy. Although, here's, here's a question that this episode kind of begs. All the, all the mayors in town, Sugar Bell's getting all this attention. I can't say that design wise she looks immensely different from the other ponies. But what is it about her that has charmed them so? And are there yet f- further rivals waiting in the w- wings? Uh, I don't know. It's one of those things where beauty is in the eye of beholder. And it seems that Big Mac is interested in sugar. And so does Feather. But I don't know. It's one of those things where... Actually, I guess you ever... in Big Mac's case, we can assume he's been uh, taking apples up there for a while. So he might have just developed a crush over time. We don't know how long he's been doing that uh, run for. Featherbags, though, seems a bit more like someone else likes this girl, so she's clearly got to be cute and great and whatnot, so I'm going to hit on her too. Wow, that's shallow. Well, I think that's a valid argument. Especially considering how competitive he is. Whenever Big Mac tries to do something, instantly Featherbang shows up, knocks him to the side, and tries to, and upstages him. That's strikes me very much as a I, I want to get this person's attention because someone else is getting it. Hmm, that makes sense. Not a good one, but still yeah, I, I do agree with that. But still, um, in this scenario here no harm done. Sugar Bell is coupled with Big Mac now, is OTP Cannon and Featherbank here is taking lessons from the CMCs or getting help from the CMCs to talk to girls. So yay, um, everything works out. I don't know, I'm still picturing other rifles for Sugar Bell appealing and appearing, and I don't know if you've ever played a game called uh, Love Rabbits. Love Rabbits? No, man. Like, What generation is that? Well, it was a Nintendo DS game. Just do a YouTube search, or was it called Rub Rabbits? Hang on. It is almost psych- psychotic in how, yep, the Rub Rabbits. It's all these silhouetted characters, but it was a hilarious game. But it featured you competing with other guys for the affection of a girl, and when I say compete, I mean just short of a death battle. It was over the top. I could see a movie coming out of this. Big Macintosh versus the world, where you must defeat uh, Sugar Bell's 12 potential suitors. Oh, wow. Okay. That would be awesome. That's that got Pilgrim reference is strong there. Yes. It's amusing because I just recently reread all of those books while I was at, type, uh, at C Ponycon. 
and then watch the movie when I got home. Nice. Which was better? The the, uh, the books are so much better. But uh, fun fact: uh, the books and the script of the movie were written simultaneously from book two. Huh. Which is why the ending is different, and certain aspects of the book aren't in the movie because uh, the script was finished somewhere around book four, but book five. Which is why a lot of book five isn't in the movie, and book six is completely separate from the movie. Aha. Uh-huh. What is this again? Scott Pilgrim, was it? Yep. yep. Versus the world. All right. Well, something to look into down the road, but we're talking about Big Mac's romantic life, which suddenly exists. And, well, uh, what can I say? Um, episode ends with hair flip and laughter. Yay. Tee hee. Ah, yes. So, uh, with that, shall we head into final thoughts? And, Silver, what do you think? Oh, this was a fun, lovable episode. Indeed, I agree that there are, there are very cringy moments. Moments where you're like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. But thankfully, they're uh, dispelled very quickly. Uh, I'm still wondering, you know, will, will Sugar Bell think on that Big Mac face as they get closer and just like, nope, sorry. I can't every, I see it every time I close my eyes. Oh God, no. Oh no. But it's enjoyable. The CMC. Really, it's a little troubling that Big Mac needs advice from Phillies about how to talk to girls, but. He's he is in my eyes a late bloomer, and more than that, he hasn't really had a, a parent to give him the talk. So he's really having to wing it. Wing it, he does, and well, uh, he got somewhere with it. Although the question now is, w- one, is this relationship going to go anywhere? Or, I mean, uh, is this going to be a recurring theme, or is it just sort of a one-time only event? But if it were to go forward. Would we have an episode where Big Mac decides to move and start a farm in the town and Applejack has to come to terms with the idea that the family might change a little? I think that'd be an interesting episode. Yeah, true. And well, like you mentioned earlier before, Silver, that the town, um, what, Townsville or whatever it's called, needs a farm. So yeah, that makes sense because the apples kind of travel all across the land. You got apples in Appaloosa, Manhattan, if I'm not mistaken. Or oh, those are the oranges. But still, um, some in Ponyville, but they're all across Equestria. So why not on this one, right? It seems like a good plan. He'd be closer to Sugar Bell. He'd be starting something brand new. But it would mean Applejack would have to accept her family can't stay the way it is forever. True. And, well, it brings up more business, so that's good. It's money, 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 money. Show me the bits. And then new Big Macintosh's new farm shows up on cribs. <laughs> oh, no. But anywho, Twy, what do you think? I think this is one of the cutest and also one of the cringiest episodes in the show. The the How goofy uh, Big Mac is uh, when he's thinking about how much he has a crush on Sugar Bell, or just when he's thinking about Sugar Bell is absolutely adorable. It's probably one of the most, um, aside from the, was it season five or season six episode, uh, where he dresses up as a woman to, to, to do this brother social, that one. Aside from that social, episode, yes. this is probably the most characterization we've seen for from him in a while, uh, since he, he doesn't get a lot of appearances, and when he does appear often, he usually just says nope, yep, and does not much aside from look, you know, angry occasionally. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. thought that was it was a great chance for us to see a location we haven't seen before. We got great characterization for Big Mac. The CMC, I guess, learned a lesson. They... I, I don't think the CMC really learned as much as it was implied they learned this time around. Yeah, I, I can see what you mean there. I can see what you mean there. I didn't care much for Featherbangs, though. Like, I, I didn't hate him like a lot of people did. I didn't consider him to be a waifu stealer. <laughs> he was just... I mean, I instantly, when he I saw him, I was like, yeah, I can see. He, he's got to be, to some degree, a parody of Justin Bieber and just that kind of pop star. But at the same time, he's his, his hair flip and all that. He just seemed really bland. Like they they were like, oh, we we have a very vague idea of what this character is supposed to be, 
and that's all they that's as far as they developed him. Funny that you mentioned Justin Bieber because um according to Vincent Tong, the voice of Feather Banks, he mentioned that uh the character was inspired by Justin Bieber. I, and I can see that in some degree. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the, the his main style is slightly reminiscent of Justin Bieber's hairstyle. Except better. Any, anything that, that's a parody of Justin Bieber is automatically better than Justin Bieber. <laughs> Alrighty then. And anyway, as for me, I like this episode. This episode is one of those, um, size of life, um, crazy go nuts kind of episode where anything goes, nothing, you don't have to take things too seriously and just have fun with it. And this is, well, a fun episode all around. I, I don't know what to say. It's, fun to see Big Mac talk more than two lines. It's fun to see him express interest in the opposite sex. It's fun to see some old characters have some more development. And well, I now know that the town that where Sugar Bell resides is called Our Town. Okay. Our Town. Our t- well, wait, that's based on the song, yeah? Yes. And well, from what I can tell on the wiki, it says Our Town. I'm not even joking here. Yeah, I think the fandom just decided that it was called Our Town because that's what all it's ever referred to aside from Starlight's Town and no one likes Starlight. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, it's so me. Uh, well, okay, uh, also called Starlight's Village. You know what? Either or. <laughs> or the town with no name. <laughs> you know what they call that? Uh, that's the town with no name. I think I'm going to stick with with Street Town for now. We decided yeah. it's the best <laughs> but, name, and if they add more space to it, it's, it becomes Streets Town. It's the perfect name. I'm sticking to it. That's my headcanon. Very well. <laughs> All right. I applaud this. But still, like I mentioned before, um, episode's not bad. I like it. The addition of Feather Banks in this episode was kind of cute, and I like to see him where they take his character in the future, if they do take him beyond what it's been given. Take him on a date? Uh, but still... No. Oh, oh Norman, I found a ship for you. You and Feather Bangs. <laughs> no. I mean, I, no, just no. Yes, it should be like, you know, I've got uh, Lightning Bliss going with Fly Sentry for a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, God. oh, God. How is that war going for you? Well, uh, it's a temporary ceasefire on Twitter, I guess, but I'm sure that will last all of five seconds. <laughs> It's going to be great. <laughs> oh, please. But, yeah. oh, Norman and Feather Bangs, why not? Apparently, you can, get a do- you can get him a docky, apparently. No, 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 thank you. No, thank you. Does this mean now you get to the ship Silverquill with someone, Norman? Oh, please. I don't know. Please don't ship me with Princess Luna. That would be also so terrible. Okay, I won't. <laughs> I've recently been, well, about a month or so ago, I was shipped with uh, Gloriosa. Oh, God. Uh, Gloriosa. Who's that again? I forgot. Uh, the antagonist from the fourth Equestria Girls movie, Legend of Everfree. Uh, she's, oh, she's my, her. my, my Discord display icon is possessed Gloriosa. Oh, okay. Don't, don't worry, <laughs> she's got this. Shit. <laughs> oh, God. But anywho, anywho. Uh, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Uh, we're going to ship you with feather bangs. I mean, uh, I thought that was the oh, term. God. No, we shall continue. Well, we've gotten to see how Big Mac and Apple Bloom are doing, but Applejack needs a little bit of love. Or at least an appearance. I don't know about love in this case. So we're going to go with Honest Apple. Yep. Uh, well, I, I kind of drip on this one. I think... Um... Next week we'll be uploading or, well, I'll be posting one of the panels that I was attending at CPonyCon first. But yeah, after that, we'll be doing the On a Apple episode review. So yeah, stick around for that. And also stick around for the panel that I was involved with because it was fun. It's fun indeed. And well, before we go, and yes, unfortunately, um, the shipping won't stop between me and Feathers, unfortunately. If you'd like to support the show, 
you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. And well, with every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast and also deleted contents and exclusive contents that are exclusive for Patreon members. And also thank you for me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Dr. Cat, Twilight Genesis, and Dracotoria, Star Stream, myself, Lag, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. And well, with that, let's end the show properly. And well, I have been Norman Senzo. I am Zizil Vakriel. I'm Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun and amazing review. See ya. I ship it. Cheers. Cheers.